God's people through revival from the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. I came to know about this Universal Scholarship Program when I completed junior high school in the year 2017. At that time, I had lost my father, and then all hope was left for me to come to school. But through the Istanaba Scholarship Program, I was able to get help to come to school. I completed Belongo Junior High School. Before I completed, I had no hope in going to school again because I lost my mom. But due to Istanaba Ministry, I was able to get a scholarship into Kolkatanga Senior High School. I completed Tamot in Belongo Junior High in the year 2017. And with the favor of God, I was found under the scholarship of Istanaba Ministry. And this helped me to always report to school in time. And with their support, I have been able to accomplish my mission in the school. And I'm very grateful to them for their help and their support. And every semester, they try to give me provisions and the money to be able to help myself in the school. When I came to school, I felt very comfortable because I had no problem to think again in the house. When I was in junior high school, I used to think a lot about how to go to school and how to. But because of their help, when I came, I felt comfortable. Initially, they gave us 10,000 Ghana cities buy our provisions and other stuff so we to be able to come to school. They also gave us some money for upkeep so that when we come to school we may not get into any problem. I wasn't having hope of attending school because I was not having someone who would help me to further up my education. Luckily for me, I had a scholarship from Isuyanaba Ministry. When I came, I was able to cope with my friends, like those that came earlier and they had the money to attend this school. I was able to cope with them because I got the money to buy all the books that I needed to further my education. I want to take this opportunity to say thank you very much to Reverend Istanaba and then Mrs. Rosman Anaba and the entire Ministry of Istanaba Ministry for how far they brought me and all the things that they've able to do for me. I say God richly bless them and continue to guide and protect them and also help them for their ministry to expand. I thank the entire ministry for their support and help towards my academy. I pray that God continue to bless them and help their ministry to expand more and more. So they'll be able to help other people to also come to school and enjoy the benefits and also enjoy from them. Thank you. We are your eyes that see the deprived. We are your ears that hear the cry of the widow and of the orphan. We are your feet that go to places where you do not even imagine you'll be able to go. But as you empower us, we will be able to do all this for you. The Lord bless you as you support the social transformation wing of the East Sudan of our ministries. Thank you. That was on the 7th of January, 2022 during a night program. Daddy said there are people here who have vowed that they will never talk to their mothers. If you are here like that, come out. You have a vow never to have anything to do with your mother. And the woman is alive. Get up and come to me here. Lift up your hand and pray. And if you are alive and you have made that vow concerning your mother, I challenge you to repent. Find your mother, make peace. The blessing of the Lord will be upon your head. My daughter, I don't know what happened. I don't know what she has done to you. I will fall in it. And dear, I'm going to hear what I'm going to say. Hey, Baba, Baba. One fan channel so up. Over here, I don't need to hear about you. Bring her to me. Madam, in my bed, where's your mother? My baga. Baga. <laughs> Where's your father? My father is dead. <laughs> and your mother? She's alive. <laughs> and you don't want to see her? No, I don't want to see her. 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 Now, tomorrow, <laughs> listen to me. Tomorrow, we are taking you there. Tomorrow, they'll take you there. Mr. Dry, approach the Gabriel as you go here. Let them parcel some nice food. Together with David Aguinet, they should pack some nice food from the ministry. Put 500 Ghana cities on it and go and greet your mother.
What, what's your name? Uh, Agnes. Agnes, look at the way you're crying. This crying alone means you love your mother. And Judy, something has been uprooted from her. And tell the mother, Brother Isu sent you to come and deliver your daughter to her. She should bury the past. This one should bury the past. And both of them shall prosper. Declare it in the name of Jesus Christ. Look at me, Agnes. Take off your face. Please. Can you smile? Compare your face now with the other face. How do you feel? When you go tomorrow, her mother will tell you that even before the ministration tonight, she was suspecting her. This lady's mother knows she's coming. You will come back and tell you. Your mother knows you'll come. I speak life into you and into your mother. And I declare in the name of Jesus. Receive grace for you and for your mother in the name of Jesus. And tomorrow, as the three of you go there, whilst you are going there, when you leave Paga, may you leave peace in that city. Leave peace in that city. Sister, we asked her to kneel before the mother, and she knelt and apologized. And the mother forgave her, and then they made peace over excited. Uh, excited and daddy and mommy they extend their appreciation uh, to the whole church they are so grateful plan again about whom call who shall hold the book where she grandma selling who buy you so many people up again why some only thing will pull up i can you can you do pull up who plan in the end And the most important thing is that peace was made between daughter and mother. We thank God for that. And it's pleasing to have you stay in tune again for today's session of Reposition with Pastor Eastwood here at the Desert Pastures, Bogotanga. So on behalf of the Senior Pastures and all EAM partners, we want to welcome you to this evening's session of Reposition. This is actually the 19th day of Reposition. We urge you to stay in tune and please don't forget to be a blessing to the lives of others by sharing this broadcast to as many people as you can. God bless you.
You want to lift up your voice and thank God for tonight. Give him praise in the name of Jesus. Exalt his holy most name. You want to thank him for night 19. And you also want to thank him for the blessing of glorification. Lift up your voice wherever you are and give God praise in the name of Jesus. Jesus. word says in Romans that who you justify you glorify and father in the name of Jesus tonight we pray in the name of Jesus through justification father we receive that glorification in the name of Jesus we lift up our voices tonight and we pray in the name of Jesus that father you glorify your people in the name of Jesus Hallelujah. 
in Ephesians chapter 1, the verse number 19. The Bible talks about the fact that, that Jesus, if you look at the verse number 21, that he is far above all principalities. After God raised him from the dead, and the Bible says that in the same Ephesians chapter 2, the verse number 4, he said, we also who have been quickened together with Christ Jesus. You want to pray at this moment that your life will manifest your position in Christ Jesus. That position of that position of elevation. You want to pray in the name of Jesus. That Father, tonight, let every aspect of me manifest this life of an elevated anointing and grace that you've put in, in me. Lift up your voice in the name of Jesus and pray. Father, let every part of me, let every part of my life, let my life manifest that newness, manifest that position in Christ Jesus. Lift up your voice and pray in the name of Jesus.
right hand side of honor. In the name of Jesus, same position in Christ. In the name of Jesus, we are walking here on earth, but we have a place in heaven. In the name of Jesus, Father, we walk in that position and let it manifest here on earth. In the name of Jesus, Ranto Shepre Katabro Shahata, Rabranto Shatinia Kabahata, Ladatata to Shepre Koposkana, La Santoria Parusha Prekoposka, Ilepoto Sepre Tikatose, Ilepo Sepre Tekalamboske, Lebretianda Papoposa, Lagatata Sukata, Repro Shatinia Bakabata. Jesus, hallelujah. You want to continue to pray in the name of Jesus. If you look at the same Ephesians chapter 1, the Bible says that, and he exalted him, and he said he is far above all principalities and powers and might and dominion, and every name that is named is not only in the world, but also in that which is to come. And we want to pray at this moment in the name of Jesus that Pastor Eastwood and any ministry, business, or person connected to him will be elevated far above the forces of darkness. Lift up your voice and pray in the name of Jesus. We are talking about elevation. And you want to pray for our father, Pastor Eastwood. You want to pray in the name of Jesus for KIA. You want to pray for 
desert pastures you want to pray for every ministry connected to our father that this ministry will experience that elevation we are talking about that will be far above every attack far above principalities far above any form of demonic agenda are you getting me lift up your voice and pray in the name of jesus you are connected as well and as this source is here your business your personal life your ministry will also experience this elevation and it and you will experience that divine energy that daddy spoke about this morning lift up your voice in the name of jesus uh, that the forces of darkness uh, cannot come near our business that the forces of darkness uh, principalities powers dominion whatever they are called whatever english word we give to them uh, that will distance ourselves uh, that our businesses that our ministry will be so distant from them to the point that uh, they cannot have access to our domain lift up your voice in the name of Jesus to be touched he is too far to be touched they cannot catch up they cannot come close pray for him lift up your voice pray for KIA that anybody that comes online that anybody that tuned into our television uh, and try to do anything negative uh, that it will not prosper lift up your voice uh, by virtue of the fact that we are elevated uh, far above attacks. Uh, it won't work on social media. It won't work in their gathering. Uh, it won't work in any coven. Uh, lift up your voice and pray in the name of Jesus that every member of Desert Pastures, uh, we are far above principalities. Uh, we are far above any attack. Uh, we are far above witches. Uh, we are far above uh, our business will exist sell who will do far better will be far better lift up your voice and pray in the name of jesus for that grace of elevation we are far far ahead of them they cannot catch up our schools are ahead of them our clinics are ahead of them anywhere we work by virtue of our presence we have that grace we are elevated far above them they cannot come near our position lift up your voice and pray here that every force of darkness by virtue of the blessing that is coming upon us that will be far above them lift up your voice and pray in the name of Jesus that tonight we receive the grace that that anointing that came upon Jesus that grace that came upon Jesus that there was a distance between him and forces of darkness that that same grace will come upon us tonight lift up your voice online lift up your voice love revolution tv lift up your voice in person and pray that prayer in the name of jesus
the more they talk about our father the more anointed he becomes the more they talk about him the more blessed he becomes that his household is blessed and protected that no weapon fashioned against him shall prosper lift up your voice and pray the more they talk about Shemekah the more we build the more they talk about our structures the more God blesses us with new ones the more they talk about us the greater we become lift up your voice and pray we are heavily protected we are heavily guarded we are heavily surrounded and heavily resourced lift up your voice and pray in the name of Jesus we are seated in Christ Jesus in heavenly places our source is not Bogatanga. our source is heaven we are elevated lift up your voice and pray in the name of Jesus that from tonight we are far above them that from tonight we are promoted above them uh, that from tonight uh, we are better far far better uh, that our businesses will experience good success uh, lift up your voice wherever you are and pray in the name of Jesus uh, by virtue of the fact that uh, you are connected uh, by virtue of the fact that you are a KI a follower a member of desert pastures uh, by virtue of the fact that uh, you are connected to Pastor Eastwood. Uh, that same anointing and grace uh, is coming on you to take dominion. Is coming on you uh, to triumph in all that you do. That same grace uh, is coming upon you to be elevated. Lift up your voice. is elevated Akayet is elevated golden horse is elevated lift up your voice and pray in the name of Jesus pray for touch world boutique lift up your voice pray for Kenania consult pray for Ernesto water pray for famous pray in the name of Jesus every business in this house is elevated in the name of Jesus pray for XT lift up your voice and pray
Hallelujah. And in the same Ephesians 1, the verse number 22, he said, He has put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. I want to pray at this moment that, Father, in the name of Jesus, we declare that all things are under our feet. Lift up your voice and declare in the name of Jesus, all forces of darkness, all principalities, anything, any malam, any juju, any principality is under my feet. Lift up your voice and pray that prayer in the name of Jesus. over them. They will go to Tongo shrines, but you'll be paused over them. They will go and chant for the all night for all they want. Whatever they want to do, wherever they visit, you will still be paused over them. Wherever they go, you will still be on top. Lift up your voice in the name of Jesus and declare in the name of Jesus that they cannot win, they cannot compete. They will still be under your feet. Lift up your voice in the name of Jesus. Uh, that when they come against you uh, by consulting darkness, uh, by consulting juju and violence, uh, that it will backfire in your face. Uh, that they will still be under your feet. Lift up your voice and pray in the name of Jesus. Uh, that they cannot be promoted above you. Uh, that they cannot get a job and you will get it. Uh, lift up your voice and pray. That father, anybody that is in the same line of business, uh, that is consulting malams, uh, that is consulting juju men, uh, father, I declare in the name of Jesus, uh, by the grace of elevation, uh, I top them, uh, lift up your voice in the name of Jesus, uh, and declare in the name of Jesus, uh, that in that state, uh, that you top them, uh, lift up your voice and pray in the name of Jesus, uh, that principalities, uh, powers, dominion, whatever they are called, they are under your feet. Declare in the name of Jesus. And if there's any error in your life, that a malam is stopping in your business, that a malam is stopping in your office, we correct that error in the name of Jesus and we put you in your rightful place. They cannot use charms over you. They cannot use juju over you. They cannot go to the pakologo over you. Lift up your voice and say, I am anointed to be elevated. I receive the grace to top anybody using malam or any evil means to take advantage of a particular situation in my life. By divine authority, I bring them to their rightful position. They are under our feet. Lift up your voice and pray the prayer.
chapter 8, the verse number 13 says, And who he justified, he glorifies. You want to lift up your voice and say, Father, glorify me in this service. Lift up your voice and pray. Glorify me in this service. In the name of Jesus. In this service of glorification, Father, glorify your servant. Lift up your voice. Add some beauty. At least put some smile on my face. Lord, I check. I check. Lift up your voice in the name of Jesus. It's been a while I smiled. It's been a while I held some money. It's been a while I ate some good food. Father, glorify your servant tonight. Lift up your voice and pray that special prayer. to lift up your voice and begin to thank God for answered prayer. Bless his holy most name. Somebody give him praise. Exalt his holy most name. Somebody give him praise. Give him praise somebody. Bless his holy most name. 
share the broadcast, invite somebody to be a part of this exciting service. Prepare your mind, prepare your spirit, even as we prepare to receive our father, Pastor Eastwood. Thank you so much for connecting. Agape praise.
Father, we give you all the glory and the honor. We bless your holy name. We magnify you. We pray in the name of Jesus that tonight you will give us the revelation and give us the faith and give us the courage to build settlements, establishments that will glorify your name. We praise your holy name and magnify you. Amen. You may be seated wherever you are and the Lord mightily bless you. Come on, somebody somewhere, just give a big clap offering to Jesus Christ and bless his holy name in Jesus, Jesus, mighty name. Today we've been looking at elevation and we started looking at it in the morning. Elevation, elevation. And this evening we want to continue with elevation. And I started off in the morning by saying that we should claim our seat at the right hand of the throne of God the Father. Jesus Christ that was quickened by the Spirit, exalted, sat at the right hand of the throne of God. And you and I, he quickened us together in him and raised us up to sit together in him in heavenly places. And uh, by the implication from chapter 1 of the book of Ephesians, to be seated together in him far above principality and power and every might and every dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. So the first thing you and I are praying about is, Father, I claim my position. And I need somebody to just lift up your hand and declare that you claim your position. You claim your seat at the right hand of the throne of God the Father. Because though that seat is yours, once in a while, Satan will try to unseat you. And once in a while, you yourself may be doubting that you are really sitting there. So can you pray right now that God will get you seated at the right hand of the throne of God? Come on, pray. Somebody pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I sit at the right hand of the throne of God. Claim that position. I know you prayed it already, but pray it again. I claim my position. Start declaring it. Declaring it. Keep 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 declaring it. Declaring that you sit at the right hand of the throne of God Almighty. In the name of Jesus, somebody say with me, Heavenly Father, in the midst of all circumstances, I claim my seat at the right hand of the throne of God Almighty in Christ Jesus. Amen. The other thing we want to be praying about is to pray for the body of Christ to receive revelation and be obedient to establish the settlement of Jesus Christ on the top of the mountains in the nations of the world so that the people would flow into the kingdom of God. We need the revelation and obedience to establish settlements. The settlement of Jesus Christ on the top of the mountains. Watch this. I said we need the revelation. Everybody say the revelation. Come on, shout it again, the revelation. Come on, say it again. We need the revelation. Come on, say it. We need the revelation. And say we need, I said we need the revelation and the obedience. Revelation and obedience. To establish the settlement of Jesus Christ on the top of the mountains. You know, I, I like the fact that the church is the ecclesia. 
the called out assembly of God. It's very easy to say that. That the church is the called out assembly. And many Christians will tell you, God doesn't live in a church building. He doesn't live in a building. And then we say things like, look, um, we, the Christians, we form the body of Christ and we are the church. But you and I know, you and I know, that for example, Presbyterian Church in Boga, when I say I'm going to Presbyterian Church, it's not the human beings I'm going to. I'm going to a building. Now, spiritually, the body of Christ, we are the church. But when I say I'm going to Presby, or I'm going to Baptist, or I'm going to Catholic, a building will come to my mind. The other thing is that all these buildings were there. People used to worship in them. They died. And they went to heaven. And the buildings are still there. You keep walking about deceiving yourself that the body of Christ is the church. And buildings are not important. You will die in your generation and go and you have left nothing on earth. And the human beings or the believers who are the real church, they will come out. And they will have nothing to dwell in. Listen, even tomatoes is in a container. The building is not a church. But the human beings are in the church. Even container, even tomatoes, they put it in a container. Sardine is in a container. Milk is in a container. That is why building is so important. And anybody who is a leader, under the sound of my voice, especially if you are a pastor and you happen to be listening to me, you better lead your people to build. In a place like Lighthouse Chapel, if you don't build, they will make you a bishop. If you say, I'm a bishop, they'll ask you, what is the cathedral you are built? They want you to build. You know what, people, the, the capacity to build is one of the great signs of a good leader. The capacity to leave something tangible on earth before you leave is a very important thing. Because you know what? In all probability, except there's an earthquake or hurricane or some dangerous thing, the building is likely to outlive you. And that is why you and I must pray for the revelation and pray to be obedient. Because you know sometimes you get the revelation and the resistance, the resistance, if you are not careful, you will do it. No. <laughs> People even in the church will fight it. They will stand against it. Especially when the building of that, that kind of building or edifice happens to coincide with COVID-19 era. People tell you, ah, this is not the time to build houses. We must think about surviving. But I'm praying for somebody in the name of Jesus that God will give you the revelation and the obedience to establish the settlement of Jesus Christ on the top of the mountain. So we, the believers, we are the temple of God. We are the church of Jesus Christ. But this temple or this church dwells in a physical temple. That's, that's, that's important. That's important. In the book of Micah, Micah gave a very powerful prophecy, which I love. Micah 4, 1. He said, and in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains. And it shall be exalted above the hills and the people shall flow onto it. Listen, God has always taken pride in temples, in houses, in buildings. So when he was sending the children of Israel into the promised land, he talked about houses. He said, you are going into houses and you are going into cities you've never built. Anybody under the sound of my voice who has never built anything, 
I pray in Jesus' name that grace will come upon you today. Revelation and obedience. You will build your own houses. You will build storehouses. You will build roads. You will build things that will outlive you. You will build hospitals. You will build banks. Receive the capacity of a builder. Receive the ability of a builder. And receive the resources of a builder. Come on, do this and say, I will build things. I will build. I will build. Somebody say, I will build things. Say it ten times. You will build. You and your wife and children will not live in a rented house forever. You will build. You will build. Come and lift up your right hand and say, I will build. Come and say, I will build. The Bible said, except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain, that build it. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain, that build it. That means if the Lord will build, there must be a laborer who is laboring. And it's when the laborer is building, then God helps the laborer to build. You must build something. So he said, Micah 4, 1. He said, In the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains. That is why by the grace of God you go to many parts of the world and you see they are building the house of the Lord. And these house of the Lord they are building are like mountains. You are looking at Dr. Paul and NJ and a hundred thousand seater auditorium. You are looking at Bishop Oedekbo and one space that can take about 50,000 people. You are looking at all these edifices and giant edifices. People are building for God and they are standing on the top of the mountains. That means they are strategic. You go into the city, you will see them. They are building institutions. That is why men of God and women of God and churches, you see they are building universities. You go to Dr. Paul and Nietzsche's church, and the thing is like a stadium. It is four football fields combined. That is the size of one church. This thing, four football fields combined. Our cameramen should try their best and get us the finished product. Because by now, it is painted and it's, a, it's beautiful. I thought you would be clapping. When you clap, then your church can get that. When you clap, then your church can get that. Listen, man of God, may you not build something gra gra for God. The mountain of God's house, the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains. It is, a city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Men don't light a candle and put it under a bushel, but they put it on a stand so that others can see and have light. I pray. May anything you do be masterclass. Masterpiece. Masterpiece. Anything you do, may it be special. Built any gra gra thing. Today I heard mommy telling one of her head teachers, she said, We want to build the best primary school around. In terms of the school being equipped with anything it needs. Oh. The other day I, I had I had a woman whose child children eh, they were attending school in, in either America or Britain or Europe or wherever, and they came to Africa. When they took the children into a classroom, I hear the children started crying. Their parents said, why are you crying? They said, why is this place so empty? When COVID-19 hit, the schools in Europe, every, in America, every child went to, especially in America, every child went home with, with, with a laptop. They gave laptop to children. They said, take them home. And they started teaching them online. African children, the way they came into the world is the way they went home. <laughs> I'm 
praying. You are going to build one of the best things in the world. You are, you are going to establish one of the best things. He said, that, now watch this one. And he said, that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and it shall be exalted above the hills. It is when it is exalted above the hills that people shall flow into it. You know why the unbelievers are very worried when we are doing big things for God? The reason they are worried is they know that as long as we continue doing small things for God, nobody will flow into the house of the Lord. But they know that when you do good things for the Lord, people will flow into the house of God. So you have to believe God in Jesus' name, man of God, that you are going to do something that will attract people and they'll flow into the house of the Lord. Now, verse number two. And many nations will come and say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord and to the house of the God of Jacob and he will teach us his ways and we will walk in his paths for the Lord shall go forth of Zion and the word of God from Jerusalem so let us go to the mountain of the Lord's house and they will teach us there the ways of God and they will teach us the paths of God so when the mountain is exalted and the people flow into it then God teaches them his ways teaches them his ways. He, he shows them his ways and teaches them his paths. So you and I must pray, God, give me the revelation and give me the obedience. And I said revelation and obedience because God has to open your eyes to see it. And after opening your eyes to see it, you need the obedience because you'll be resisted. And sometimes even fear. Sometimes because you don't have the resources. You don't know what to do. You don't know how to let the thing happen. You must be strong and be of good courage and be obedient and get the thing done. So, number two is pray for the body of Christ to receive the revelation and obedience to establish the, the settlement of the Lord Jesus Christ on the top of the mountains. Prayer number three, prayer warrant number three, pray that believers in Christ will receive faith and boldness to shake the world with the power of the kingdom. We need the boldness to shake the world. That means we need the thing that will put the fear of God in, in the world. Boldness to preach. Boldness to cast out devils. Boldness to heal the sick. Boldness to walk in the power of the Holy Ghost. And also boldness to do physical things. Boldness to do physical things. That will shake the world. I, I know that we all agree about using spiritual power to shake the world. But I also believe with all my heart that the time is coming physically we will shake the world i see physically you will build hospitals that will shake the world and build institutions that will shake the world but you see you need the faith and the boldness to shake the world and that is because the unbelievers are not going to allow you to just do it like that in the days of the apostles the bible said they went some to some places to preach acts chapter 17 and when they preach and minister the word of God the Bible said and the Jews which believe not were moved with envy when you start doing things for God there are people that will be moved with envy you see envy is something you can never take out of the world it's, it's part of a human being listen human beings were envious of God so who, who are you the devil came to human being and told Eve and Adam God knows that the, God knows that the day you eat of this fruit, you will be like God. Knowing the difference between evil and good. So Adam and Eve, they ate the fruit they wanted to be like God. And one thing to be like God is envy. They want to be like you. So your neighbor will be envious. Your competitor will be envious. Somebody will by all means be envious of you. You know, people, stop wanting to live a life without affliction, a life without persecution, a life without disturbance. If you don't want a life with disturbance, then achieve nothing. And if you achieve nothing, failure will trouble you. 
So whichever way you look at it in the world, either somebody will trouble you or something will trouble you. So you go ahead and be successful. Let people hate. Let people be envious. The important thing is that you are moving on in life. In the name of Jesus, can I hear you clap your hands like you have some faith? Clap your hands like you have some faith. So the Bible said, and the Jews, which believe not, were moved with envy. Moved with envy. Sometimes it looks like they are moved with, with logic. Sometimes you may think they are moved with logic. Sometimes you may think they are moved by, by their desire and care for the poor. In fact, this is, the poor are, are the things people use as human shield. Huh? When you build your house and you are living in your house and you are enjoying yourself, and they say, look at the way there are poor people around and look at the kind of house this brother or this sister has gone to build. When you are riding your nice motorbike, then they say, hey, look, his mother is poor and look at the moto he is riding. I have one thing to tell you. You did not create the poor. The poor man walking there, you didn't create. Even God who created the poor does not live in hell. He lives in heaven. Uh -uh. And then God who created the poor doesn't live on earth. He lives where? And the streets are what? Streets of gold. Is God walking on gravel in heaven? When they blackmail you a little bit, you start feeling guilty for being blessed. To, to the listen, may you prosper and be blessed without any sense of guilt. Don't let anybody come and torment you. You know what, people? Take care of the poor. Bless the poor. Help the poor. After that, enjoy what is left. Enjoy what is left. Let God bless your life. Let God bless your life. Let God bless you. And the Jews, which believe not, move with envy. Oh, they'll be moved with envy. You hear a pastor preaching. It's, it's not about how many people you have in your church. It's not about how many people you have in your church. I want a small church where everybody will go to heaven. 